Earlier this morning, detectives and federal agents invaded a junkyard in DuPage County, just west of Chicago. They thought they might find the bodies of the two Spilatros. A tipster had told the feds that a gray Oldsmobile allegedly used in the abduction of the brothers could be found there. In keeping with the legendary M.O. of the Chicago mob, officials fully expected that they might find corpses inside the trunk of the automobile. In the end, they found nothing to tie the junkyard or any of the cars there to the Spilatro disappearance, and the search was called off. But late today, there was a minor breakthrough on another front in this investigation. You'll remember yesterday we told you that law enforcement officers had been unable to determine the whereabouts of two top Spilatro lieutenants, Pauly Shiro of Scottsdale, Arizona, and Joey Hansen of Marina Del Rey, California. Well, today police are reporting that they've spotted Hansen in Los Angeles and that he seems hale and hearty. Shiro, however, is still reported to be among the missing, and officials are said to be intensifying their efforts to determine his whereabouts. Essentially, the bodies of both Anthony and Michael Spilatro showed very similar injuries. Uh, the injuries were primarily blunt force injuries. Um, they were about the head, the neck, uh, and the chest, and to some extent the extremities. There was injury to the neck, but uh, uh, no evidence that there was actually a strangulation. Do you think the bodies were in the grave for what period of time? The bodies had been in the grave for uh, uh, several days, uh, at least a, a week, and possibly longer. You guys got to cut it out, I'm warning you now, all right? Tony Spilatro's winning streak in court was unparalleled in the ranks of organized crime. But lately, even Spilatro had to wonder about his future. Along with a 17-count trial, which had ended in a mistrial, there was a separate murder trial slated. And a case implicating Spilatro in skimming from Las Vegas casinos was also waiting in the wings. All of the other defendants in the skimming case were convicted. As a young man, Tony Spilatro came to the attention of authorities when he was repeatedly spotted in the company of Chuck Nicoletti and Milwaukee Phil Aldericio, two of the most feared hitmen of their day. Some say Spilatro learned the ropes of the mob from the pair, but there was never any proof of that, only suspicion. Spilatro would eventually be linked to as many as 25 mob-related killings. Witnesses died. Spilatro never did suffer a conviction for a violent crime. By the time Spilatro made his move to Las Vegas, it would make the evening news in Chicago. man by the name of Tony Spilatro has attracted the attention of law enforcement officials, some of whom think Spilatro is the most cunning and dangerous member of the crime syndicate. In 1963, Spilatro was accused of the murder of a loan shark. Spilatro was acquitted when his co-defendant was shotgunned to death. In 1979, Spilatro suffered two convictions for filing a false loan application. The sentence, a $1 fine. In 1974, Spilatro was arrested here in Las Vegas for murder. The case was dropped. Later that year, Spilatro was accused of defrauding the Teamsters Union. All of the defendants, including some of the top men in the Chicago mob, were acquitted after the untimely death of the prosecution's star witness. A 1981 racketeering case is still pending in court. Prosecutors were appealing that case. In 1983, Spilatro was tried for the torture murder of two Chicago street punks. He was acquitted. There were at least 15 other arrests, not a single conviction. Law enforcement officials had yet to beat Spilatro in court. A longtime Chicago mob observer reported, Some predict Tony will take a big fall someday, but it hasn't happened yet. So far, Spilatro has lived a charmed life. That charmed life ended last week. If the killers follow true to form of most mob hits, Spilatro's murderers will likely go unpunished. Mark Fierro, Eyewitness News 8. Anthony Spilatro, Tough Tony, Tony the Ant. In a town rightly or wrongly labeled as an organized crime stronghold, it was Spilatro who personified the public perception of mob influence and underworld style. The FBI tailed him for a decade, trying to put together a case that would put Spilatro behind bars. 
In the end, it may have been former friends and allies who took Tony off the streets permanently, perhaps making law enforcement's job easier. I think that uh, his passing now will probably uh, have an effect of somewhat of a deterrent uh, in lessening the crime rate here in uh, Las Vegas. Federal authorities believe that Chicago underworld leaders entrusted Las Vegas to Spilatro to supervise loan sharking, burglary rings, extortion, and other rackets. Ferran says operations will be disrupted without an iron-fisted boss man. Some victims may, uh, victims being those who borrowed the money, may uh, find themselves uh, getting a pass because there is nobody here to collect. Uh, there uh, may also be uh, individuals at a lower level than was Splatro and others who may still be around collecting. Mr. Splatro's death now leaves the alleged overseer of Las Vegas uh, spot vacant. Ferran explains that with dozens of crime figures from Chicago, New York, and other cities recently convicted or indicted, there may be a shortage of mob men available who could run Las Vegas' rackets as profitably and as efficiently as federal authorities believe Spilatro did. Richard Urey, Eyewitness News 8. As the bodies of Anthony and Michael Spilatro were finally released by authorities, the families of the reputed mobsters learned that the Chicago Archdiocese has forbidden a public church funeral. It's not the first time church officials here have taken that stand where organized crime is involved. To avoid scandalizing the faithful, Joseph Little Caesar DiVarco was denied a public mass last January. But DiVarco had been found guilty of racketeering and died while in federal custody. A spokeswoman for the Archdiocese says even though the Spilatro brothers were never found guilty by any jury, their reputation for involvement with organized crime is well known. Uh, it seems to me that the church is going by whatever, whatever is read in the newspaper, and the stuff that's been in the newspaper has just been vicious, it's been lies. Vic Sampanetti has been friends with the Spilatro since childhood. He says the family is very disappointed. I'm very bitter. I, I can't understand it. The church teaches us teaches our children love and forgiveness, and yet I don't see the church practicing love and forgiveness. Most observers think the decision is based more on Anthony Spilatro's reputation as the mob's man in Las Vegas. The parish where Michael Spilatro was a member has been flooded with phone calls. Even the pastor disagrees with the attempt to avoid scandal. All I can do is to actually empathize with the family and I offer to say a memorial mass at a subsequent date if they would like me to do so. The Archdiocese states that this is not a judgment about eternal salvation nor about moral guilt or innocence, that it is seeking to respect both the needs of the family and the needs of the entire church community. Funeral services without the public mass are scheduled for Friday.